I have not been so excited for a game and like, like it's hard to capture when I, I'm in my 30s guys I'm 33 and honestly uh, most games don't capture the joy that they used to as like a kid when you get like that one game a year That's all your family can afford you're looking forward to it You got that sense of just wonder and anticipation and that is what I've got for Elden Ring and uh, maybe you do too, but can you actually run the game? Well, we've got the official PC system requirements. Ah, I'm melting! And this time, um, they're official. This got tweeted out and it has not been deleted. So uh, if you're like, wait, what? Didn't you already do a system requirement video on Elden Ring? Yes, but at that time, they only had the minimum specifications posted on the Steam page and then they were immediately taken down. So it was like, question mark? Anyway, what we have now is the minimums confirmed, guys. These, uh, everybody in my comment section was like, there's no way those are the minimums, they have to be the recommended. Nope, they were official, here we go. Second of all, recommended is up now as well. So let's just jump in, what do we see here? Now, to, to repeat a few things from my other video, because this might be the first time you're watching it, on the minimum side of things, yes, the memory is 12 gigabyte, not eight gigabyte. A lot of games minimums are eight. This one is 12, and that is a 50% increase, and a 16 gigabyte stick, uh, you know, set of RAM, don't get one stick, get a dual channel set, is about 50 bucks. So if you need to hit that upgrade, go for it. Although to be honest, you know, you could try running the game on eight and see how you do. Anyway, uh, again, quick stuff. We do have the 60 gigabytes of storage and it's not saying that you need an SSD. Although uh, as usual, I always recommend get yourself an SSD, uh, at least for like your boot, your main programs you run and whichever main game you're playing currently. And you can swap that out to you know, like a big storage hard drive uh, if you, you know, when you're not mainly playing that one. Anyway, uh, it does say that you need a DX12 level of, uh, you know, GPU. And then speaking of GPUs, that's the big one. It is a 1060 as the minimum. Also an RX 580 on the AMD side of things, although there's a little bit of good news, even though it's a pretty high minimum. The good news here is the three gigabyte version of the 1060, which is a bit weaker and, uh, you know, only has three gigabytes. So sometimes people run into an issue where a 1060 could run the game, but the three gigabytes you're limiting fa factor, well, they're specifically stating the three gigabytes would work. And same thing on the RX 580, which also has an eight gigabyte version. They are specifying the four gigabyte version can run the game. Now we also have the jump to recommended, which jumps up to a GTX 1070 eight gigabyte or a RX Vega 56 eight gigabyte and our RAM jumps up to 16. Now, by the way, I'm gonna pull up in just a second a relative performance chart so you can help figure out, okay, what does this mean for you if these are your GPUs? What does this actually mean to you? We'll talk about that in a second, but first, just a little bit about the CPUs. Because honestly, for me, this is what's jumping out as the, as the uh, more, crazy high expectation, although crazy high, you know, that that's relative, but the uh, Core i5-8400 and the Ryzen 3 3300X are big step ups in processing power compared to previous From Software games. Now it's possible that they're just overstating the system requirements, and that's also possible on the GPU side of things, but it's also possible um, that because this is more open world, we know that Elden Ring is a departure in game design from pre previous From Software titles, much more open, it is possible that we're gonna be needing beefier processors in order to hit what I'm hoping is a minimum 60 FPS at low settings. By the way, it doesn't tell us that. Can I just complain? It doesn't tell us the frame rate or resolution uh, or graphic settings targets for these. Here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping this is 1080p low 60, because if it's 1080p low 60, then that means that if you have a worse GPU than this, you could then drop down maybe the resolution to 900p, 720p uh, to get 60 FPS, or you could just play the game at 30 FPS with a significantly weaker GPU. And same thing with the CPU. If you need this to hit 60 FPS, perhaps you could get by with something much weaker if you're going for a 30 FPS experience. The graphic settings don't tend to have a lot of effect on the CPU demand. And the recommended CPUs are jumping up to the same generation, but jumping up from the i5 to the i7, and from the Ryzen 3 to the Ryzen 5. Now, a, a few details here, just so we've got them. Uh, the i5-8400 is, the, again, the minimum Intel. This is a six core, six thread chip, and it's from 2017. This is the Coffee Lake series of processors. So six core, six thread from 2017. And then their recommended CPU is jumping up to the 8700K, which is also six core, but now allows hyper threading with six core, 12 thread, still Coffee Lake, still a 2017 chip. 
okay? So the main difference is allowing hyper-threading, although also the boost clocks uh, and base frequencies are higher as well. So it's unclear whether they're recommending the better CPU to get the higher uh, clock speeds on those, or whether it's the increase in core count, or it could be both. So in other words, maybe the game could take advantage of more than six cores by jumping up to six core 12 thread on the 8700, or it could just be the frame rate boost from the increased single core performance. That's a bit of a question mark. Now, AMD side of things, we were on the Ryzen 3 3300X, which is a four core eight thread chip. Now this is much newer. This is from 2020. However, at on these generations of CPUs, the older Intels could actually compete in gaming performance with the newer AMD CPUs. It tend to be AMD gave you more cores for the money, but the single threaded performance, which heavily impacts gaming, um, was, was usually a win for Intel. So the older generations of Intel could compete with newer generations of AMD. So I'm saying that these might actually be fairly equivalent in, uh, uh, don't double, you know, you could double check some reviews, but even though this is newer, I'm saying it might still only kind of match or at least be in the same ballpark of the gaming performance of this older Intel CPU. And then we jump up to the Ryzen 5 3600X for the recommended, that is also six core, 12 threads, similar to the recommended 8700K. And again, it's newer, um, this is a 2019 chip rather than the 20, you know, what was it, 2017 chip from Intel. But again, that's just helping it catch up in terms of its gaming performance with the Intel chips. So these are fairly beefy. Anyway, let's get into the uh, the GPUs here. So I already kind of talked about what they are, but where do you fall in between? So again, here's one reason why I'm hoping that these are both targeting 60 FPS, but at low and then at you know high, maybe not ultra, but at least on high settings. Well, one reason is that the jump from a 1060 to a 1070, even from the three gigabyte to the eight gigabyte, isn't doubling. So if this was 30 to 60, we would uh, at at equal settings, right? You would need a you know a doubling of performance. You would need 200% of the performance. Um, whereas that's not what we're seeing here. If I pull up a relative performance chart here, this is over at Tech Power Up. I'll link it in my description. The 1063 gigabyte does tend to perform a bit worse than the 1066 gigabyte. That has an 11% gain. Now it's unclear whether that's just because uh, when they tested games, um, I'm saying like some people probably know this. I don't off the top of my head. I'm not sure if it's just the VRAM um, overflow, right, on the three gigabyte card that dropped it in reviews, or if it's actually slower, even if it's not running over its VRAM limit. I'm honestly not 100% sure on that. But just keep in mind that the they are specifying the three gigabyte version, and that does tend to be, you know, not as good as the uh, six gigabyte version. And then jumping all the way up from here, uh, by the way, the RX 584 gigabyte does tend to line up with the 1066 gigabyte. Um, anyway, but jumping up from here, you might find your GPU, right? So from here, you could scroll up and find the recommended GPU, and you can see where yours might fall. Like if you have a GTX 980 or a 1650 Super, right? You are beating the, uh, the minimum GPU, at least. And as we continue to scroll up, the 1070 is on average a 50% increase over the three gigabyte version of the 1060, according to this chart. Or from this uh, six gigabyte version, if we're saying that, uh, you know, if we baseline off of that one, the 1070 is like a 35% increase in performance. And again, a 35% increase in performance is not going to account for going from 30 FPS to 60 FPS, but it could account for going from 60 FPS low to 60 FPS high. That extra uh, performance could be uh, the explanation, which is why I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think that's what this is. I think it's 60 FPS low, 60 FPS high. I could be wrong, that is speculation. Wait for reviews. Anyway, now, what? how does yours compare to the baseline? So again, looking at the 1060 as a baseline, if we scroll down, you're now finding that you're below the recommended settings, but as you're down here with like a 1650, if I'm correct that it's targeting 60 FPS, then that means that even as you're down here on like a 1650, it just means you're not getting 60 FPS, right? Um, it, you know, go down to 1050 Ti, you're not getting 60 FPS, but you're still over half the performance. You're probably getting at least 30 FPS. If we scroll down here to like a uh, GTX 1050, you're now at 50% of the performance of the uh, minimum GPU. So if I'm correct that, that the minimum recommendation was for 
60 FPS, your 1050 will be getting you 30 FPS. Again, there is speculation involved here. I need to keep repeating that. These are not guarantees, but I'm trying to help you at least predict, right? Now, in terms of running the game at higher resolutions, like I said, this doesn't state the resolution, but I'm just gonna assume this is 1080p because that's generally the default if, if it's not otherwise specified. Sometimes minimums are, are actually below 1080p, but usually these days, even minimums are targeting 1080p. Um, so now if we scroll up to the 1070 as our recommended GPU, so let's assume that this is basically 1080p high settings at 60 FPS. Again, speculation on my part. Well, what if you wanna play 1440p high settings? Well, in most games, you'll need at least a 35, 40% uh, performance jump over 1080p. Now the pixel count goes up by like 77%, but the um, in most games, the resolution doesn't uh, increase the demand exactly even with the pixel count. Um, because not everything's processed per pixel, okay? Uh, so you'd probably be okay if you're up here in the 2070, 3060, 2060 Super. I would imagine you'd be just fine at 1440p, 60 FPS high settings. And if you have something a little bit lower, you can probably tweak the settings a little bit or maybe you'll be okay anyway, right? It's okay to turn down a couple of settings if you need to. Now, jumping up to 4K at high, higher settings, I do think that we're gonna be uh, wanting a, a pretty significantly powerful GPU. In general, on most games, I'd recommend the 6800 XT or the 3080. We might get lucky here, but honestly, with the uh, performance targets for the consoles, like the PS5 and the um, Series X, I'm, I'm, I don't know, guys. I think they're only hitting 4K 30 with dynamic scaling, is my understanding. So uh, I think we will want a pretty beefy GPU for 4K. Now I'll be benchmarking this game on a 1060 and an RX 6800 XT and an RX 6600 once it launches. So you can stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in seeing that. Also, just a last little bit, it doesn't state it here, but to my knowledge, this game will get ray tracing in a future patch, but it's not gonna be there at launch. And I have not seen anything about FSR or DLSS, so I'm just gonna assume it's not there until maybe, hopefully, it comes with the ray tracing patch, but that's just me speculating. I do believe it has HDR support. Also, I believe it's gonna be locked to 60 FPS, even on PC, and I think that has something to do with the From Software engine. Uh, there's usually mods to unlock it and let the From Software games run beyond the 60 FPS limit, although I believe that can cause some issues, at least in previous games, uh, with a certain aspects of their game, whether that's the physics or the combat timings, uh, invincibility frames, I don't know, man, but just giving you guys that info. All right, I hope all of you have an excellent day.